Hi, and welcome along to AFTV Transfer Daily, the show that keeps you up to date with players that have been linked with the summer transfer move to Arsenal. I'm in a hotel room in Russia. It's the big one tonight. England taking on Croatia in the semi-finals of the World Cup. I was out last night with a load of uh, England fans and um, drinking all the vodka as that song's been going. And I'll tell you, I feel a bit worse for wear this morning. Um, I've got to perk myself up because later on it's the big one. And uh, whoever wins the game will take on France, who beat Belgium last night. So uh, hopefully, fingers crossed, it's going to be a France versus England final. That would be amazing. I still can't believe England are, are even in the semi-final. But uh, we're here for that. And we're going to be doing lots of coverage on that for that on AFTV across all of our accounts throughout the day. So make sure you um, take a look out for that. Now... The big news, of course, is that Arsenal have finally signed Lucas Torreira. Uh, he's officially signed yesterday for Arsenal. He's pictured there in all of the Arsenal kit and the pictures of, of um, have been flying all around social media yesterday. Uh, £27 million pounds reportedly uh, is the fee, uh, although it's undisclosed as usual, for the 22-year-old who moves from Sampdoria in Italy and it is a big signing for Arsenal, a player that Arsenal have needed for a long time, that defensive-minded midfielder that we have lacked for many years. And uh, I know that every Arsenal fan is hoping that he's going to solve that problem, the eternal problem, which is a bit of protection for the back four. Now, um, Unai Emery was asked yesterday um, about Lucas Torreira and, and the signing, and his quotes were, He's a midfielder with great quality. I enjoyed watching his performances for Sampdoria and Uruguay in the World Cup. He's a young player with good experience, but he wants to keep growing. Um, we welcome Lucas to Arsenal and look forward to him joining us for pre-season. Um, Torreira's going to wear the number 11 shirt, and I'm sure that Torreira will probably... Uh, get a little break because he has been playing in the uh, World Cup and a lot of really tough and intense games for Uruguay. Um, so he'll probably get a couple of weeks off before he joins up for pre-season with Arsenal. And Torreira himself was asked about the move. And of course, he is very, very happy indeed. Remember I said I, uh, one, a friend of mine saw him over in Hertfordshire on Monday and he was full of smiles and really, really happy. And Torreira's quotes... Um, on joining Arsenal with this, he said, I want to make the most of the opportunity life has given me. I'm very happy. I'm looking forward to starting this new adventure. For a while, I've been receiving loads of messages in my social media accounts. I guess it's all down to the fact that there were talks of me moving to Arsenal even before the World Cup started. I'm very happy and I hope to meet all the fans very soon. And... Um, Yep, Torreira is a gooner. Torreira is an Arsenal player. And um, I think, you know, by looking at all of the comments uh, that have been going around, most Arsenal fans seem to be uh, very, very happy with this bit of business that has been done by Arsenal. And um, it's positive. Very, very positive. Ian Wright yesterday, um, interestingly, um, tweeted out, Great momentum in this window. Socrates and Lichsteiner's age and experience balanced off with one, maybe two exciting young players. Great season and a World Cup for Torreira. And he could sh slot straight in, but will need some time to settle. Patience is the key. And I agree with that. It's going to take him a little time to settle in. I know um, defensive midfielder and that what we need. But I think Torreira, you know, it's the Premier League. It's different to all the other leagues around the world and it will take him a little time to settle in. But I do think that uh, Torreira is going to really going to be suited um, to Arsenal and to, you know, be that added bit of protection, what we've needed in that midfield area. But not only that, as I said, he brings a lot of quality with his passing, with his set pieces. Really, really good signing. Arsenal always also making another signing um, that's going to be unveiled today, and that is Matteo uh, Guendozi. He signed for £7 million, uh, signed from um, Lorient, uh, 19 years of age, uh, French wonder kid. A lot of teams were looking at this kid, um, including uh, PSG, who actually, he actually came through PSG's academy. 
But Unai Emery has um, managed to personally persuade him to sign for Arsenal in a four-year deal. And again, um, it's an exciting addition. He's a young player. Um, you know, I have to admit, I hadn't heard a lot about him um, before he was linked with Arsenal. But I've been doing a lot of research on him. And he is very highly thought of. Uh, apart from looking like a David Luiz lookalike, uh, he's really highly thought of. And again, this looks like uh, another positive um, signing by Arsenal, signing this youngster. Uh, Arsenal have also signed another youngster um, on a scholarship contract. That is Sam Greenwood. He's 16. Um, he was at Sunderland, a striker. But he signed on at Arsenal. Again, another player that a lot of um, the big Premier League clubs were chasing. Um, Man City amongst one of them. But he's decided to uh, come to Arsenal, Sam Greenwood. Um, obviously, this is a, a player that's going to be what you call in development. You know, he's not going to be, you know, coming straight into the team or nothing like that. But again, you know, listen, it's just good that players are looking at it and saying, well, I might choose Arsenal. I might go to Arsenal. So uh, Greenwood signing on at Arsenal. Now, who else will Arsenal bring in? I still feel that Arsenal need that marquee signing, bums on seat signing. They've made all the right types of signings in the right types of areas. I still think they need a big bums on seat signing, as they call it. That sort of signing that gets a load of shirts sold and stuff like that. Um, now, we're still being told that they're considering Christian Pavon. I'm not sure if he'd be that major signing, but he would be an exciting signing from Boca Juniors. Uh, also played in the World Cup. Um, of course, for Argentina. He's still being linked with a move to Arsenal, although today there's also lots of links linking him with a move to Barcelona. So, you know, when it comes to South American players, when Barcelona starts to come into the equation, it becomes less likely that they'll move um, to a team like Arsenal. But Pavon's still being mentioned today. Now, what about this next one? Now, listen, don't shoot the messenger here, right? I don't want you to start going in and slagging me off and cussing me when I'm going to mention this next rumour, right? It's a rumour. And it's what we deal with on the show. We talk about rumours. Before I tell you about the rumour, I'm going to tell you about Squadron Mustafi. Spoke about it yesterday. Being linked with a move to Juventus. Juventus really interested um, in Squadron Mustafi. Incidentally, we did that poll on yesterday where I asked you, should we sell Squadra Mustafi, yes or no, we did the poll on it, 58% of you um, said yes, we should sell him, 42% of you said no, um, we should keep Squadra Mustafi, which is quite interesting, I, I was thinking to myself that the margin might have been bigger saying to sell him, so um, it, it looks like the, you know, the majority of people think yes, sell him, but it doesn't look like people go mad if he wasn't sold. But anyway, Juventus really interested in Squadra and Mustafi, right? Here comes the rumour now. Chill, relax, right? Rumours are that Arsenal are saying, OK, what about if we sell you Squadra and Mustafi, could we get Dybala... <laughs> stop, stop laughing. Could we get Dybala coming the other way as part of the deal? And that apparently Arsenal... You know, I've had some little talks with Dybala's representatives to find out if there would be a possibility of that. Now, of course, Paolo Dybala, one of the, you know, most talked about forwards. You know, he's sort of like that second forward, isn't he? More of a sort of a number 10. He's not your out-and-out -out forward. Um, but certainly, he's a he would be that mega name. I don't know quite where he'd fit in, because this is when I'm thinking about these rumours. I'm like, we've got Lacazette there, Bamiyang... Does Dybala, where does he play? Is Ozil there as well who can play in that position? It just, that's why I'm thinking, although I suppose you could put him out wide and make him play out on the left-hand side because he is a left-footed player. Um, I, I, I highly, I, I doubt this one. I doubt this one. There was rumours yesterday that Liverpool were going to put an £80 million bid in for him as well. But um, Jurgen Klopp apparently has since said, no, that's not going to happen. But certainly, you know, with Cristiano Ronaldo coming in, at Juventus, that means that Dybala, will he get, get as much game time as he, he hopes? That's what a lot of the rumours are saying, that he might be looking to move on. And certainly, he's one of the hottest players around. Even though he didn't get into the World Cup squad, there's this rumour 
that uh, Messi didn't want him in the Argentinian team um, that's been going around. But Di Bala is one of the top players um, in Europe and it would be exciting. Um, but I see it as highly, highly unlikely. But it is a rumour that has been going around today. So I thought, you know, let me touch on it. Don't kill the messenger, as I said, right? Uh, let me get into a couple of comments. Um, you know, I've been going through all your comments on a day-to-day -day basis and I apologise for not reading more of them um, before on some of the shows. We're going to do a couple of today. Um, Aaron Reigns, um, in talking about Arsenal, he says, I really want Arsenal to sign Bruno Fernandes and Harry Maguire or Yeri Mina. So he still thinks we could do it a defender. Perhaps sell off Mustafi and Welbeck for funds and after that we're fine. And then he's uh, listed Torreira, Socrates, Mina, Maguire, Leno, um, Stefan Lichsteiner, excellent transfer window. That would be a, a good transfer window if we could do that. Um, but... Uh, doubt it um uh lo 309 says i'm not happy with the transfer business so far you can see um by the players we are linked with that there is a small budget and therefore we are not shopping um in a we're shopping in a much lower market i think he meant to say there he said our question if any of the players we have signed or linked with will get into the teams that finished above us last season Lichstein and socrates were both dropped from their starting 11 places and told to leave their clubs, yet they were walking to ours. I'm glad to see um, a needed change in policy. Uh, these have been good signings, but we, but more are needed as well as tactic, tactical and mental development within the squad to be ready for the next season. I, I think it's been a good window. I do think we could do with one big signing. That's my opinion on it. Um, Yes, what he says there, but then, you know, guys like Lichstein have come in to add experience to the team. And I don't think that's a bad thing. I really don't think that is. Um, Surab says, stop crying about Wilshire. Robbie obviously means there. It's been weeks. He's the longest serving player in the worst period. The longer he stays, we cannot move on from the Wenger era. OK, all right, I'll stop crying about Jack Wilshire. Uh, Nexus one says, uh, Mustafi should be given a chance. Bellerin too, or Bellerin's going to get his chance. Both players lost confidence under Wenger. I bet Unai gets the best out of them again, and that's what Unai Emery's been brought in to do. There's a lot of very expensive and very good players in that team that we need to get the best out of, and hopefully Unai Emery will be our best signing of the season and gets the best out of them. And last one here says, Dawn Moon, happy so far, but not enough. Need a top winger. Nelson is not ready. Reese Nelson, obviously, is talking about there. But according to David Ornestein, we won't sign anyone. Uh, we won't sign any more, uh, which makes sense to our rumoured budget. I guess it wasn't Wenger being tight. It's the board. Let Sven and Unai buy the players they need. I slightly agree with this guy here. That more, this cannot, I'm sorry, if it's completed now and that's all of our business, I'm happy with the business we've done so far. But I still think one big marquee signing, exciting signing to add to that, and it would be a fantastic transfer window. Will the board do that? We will find out. Listen, thanks for watching the show. Big one for England tonight. Let's hope they can do it, and we'll be back tomorrow.